Hey everybody, what are you doing today? We're having a good time. It's supposed to be 88 degrees. And better than that, guess what? I wanted to give you all the bouquet of wildflowers that they would not allow in the average homeowners association. Not to mention tiny houses. But you know about that already, don't you? <clears throat> well, I'm here to tell you. There's an alternative way to living in life. Where you can be out here enjoying the sunshine and the grass. And actually have a view. Uh, can you see it? There it is. The ship is salvaged dreams. Now, you wonder why more people don't want to be down here when the weather's beautiful. And you could be doing things like... Oops, straightening up an aloe plant. You know, if you put that on sunburns, it's real good. Any kind of burn. And and be able to be out here in nature. What's nature? You know what nature is? Nature is that place where butterflies and flowers and all sorts of things. Yeah, and there's a hostess with the mostess. And what we're doing is we're kind of cleaning up for the day, but we don't want to mow. I mean, would you want to mow this? This is my bouquet for you guys, a living bouquet. And if you see this and you want to be around it, I would recommend you come out and visit and stay in one of the tiny houses and look out on the fields that are about to be more wildflowers and sit out here at the picnic table. Maybe even have yourself a little barbecue and get away and look at the beautiful natural violet and when she goes and prepares the houses for you and makes breakfast for you, oh, she makes a good breakfast. Gluten-free, organic eggs, if you wish. We have only organic eggs, actually. The gluten-free part. We even sometimes have the, would you believe these trees, mesquite, they actually have beans that fall that make gluten-free, protein-rich flour. And you can mix it in with your food. And so that way, a lot of this, would you understand these are actually a, a spiny version of a cactus that if you take the juice out of the cactus and you mix it with um, some of the clay we have on the property some of the pigment and you mix it with some lime you can make a paint that lasts for 200 years but there's another version of this cactus that we have that doesn't have a lot of needles and you can actually cut it and then make it into pancakes look at this now I know you guys up there north of me where that line gets to freezing and the snow. If you want to escape, imagine if you had a house like this in Texas and it was a and b that you owned on our location in Salvage and you got to write off the taxes, depreciate it, and come down here and write off working on it when it's snowing up north because you have to work on these things once in a while. So you write off the trip, you write off paying for the food, you write off paying for the air tickets, and get away from the snow. Not that you have any snow that you don't want, but if you did, if instead you wanted to maybe give your honey, your sweetheart, a bouquet of flowers that she's never gonna forget. Why? I know a place you could take her to. I know a really cool little place you could take her to. And you know what? If you don't think that the flowers on the ground are enough, why? Guess what? I got another bouquet for you. And I've even got honeybees that come out here and will be all over this making honey. Now, some of you may go, oh my goodness, why would I want to be around no flowers? Why would I want to be about green grass? Oh my goodness, why would I want to be around green grass for? Well, I'll tell you what. You could be staying in a little Victorian house. Soon, you could be picking grapes off the trees, where they're growing up over the trees. There's gonna be lots of them. You could be looking at the flowers, but they'll only be around for a few more weeks. And then the fruit trees. Now we planted all these. Mind you, there was no standing water when I started this little permaculture experiment. I'd never grown anything, so I had to learn a lot. 
here's another bouquet of flowers for you. And it sits underneath what I believe is probably a tree, a peach tree in this case. I don't know for sure. Um, some of them did not make it so well through the freeze. Um, that's our fault. So one of the places that we made and we want to teach people how to make is called the ginger swan. Now, you know, most people don't appreciate what an 80 square foot house can have in it. But that's got a beautiful double bed upstairs. It's also got a hammock for a guest. It's got a balcony on it. It's got a porch on it. If it was finished, there's a little shower on it. And the view, my goodness. Not only is there a little yacht to look at, but there's a ship of salvage dreams. Oops, where is it at? There it is. And to get there, you go through the covered bridge over untroubled waters. And that sits on Walden Pond. Walden Pond's actually pretty big. This is just the feeder to it. Oh, there's something out there. Probably turtles and fish. We even have an otter. And there's a beaver, actually a family of beavers. And they live under the boat. Way over there. It's the one that looks like it's Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island crash. And underneath it, a beaver has made a house. There were no beavers when we started this project. This is one of the ponds. The beaver keeps trying to plug up so that it stays deeper. And then this is my infamous skinny dip pond. Skinny dip pond. All the fish in there. You ready? All the fish in there are naked. Now, this is going to be something I'm not going to put any warnings in for children over 18 and all that kind of stuff. But can you imagine all those naked fish jumping up and people seeing them? Oh my goodness. That would scare away some people. Now, we have some oops, fish food. Then we go ahead and give them every once in a while. And this is to encourage them to. Get religious and get some clothes, man. Going out naked? Oh my goodness. Watch. Now, if you watch close, really close. And then over here, once upon a time, this is Skin Tip Pond. And there's a very famous video over a million views. This is Egyptian papyrus. Now watch. You see all those naked fish skinny dipping in there? Skinny dipping fish. Every single one of them. Not a one of them is ashamed either. It's crazy. You think they'd be ashamed. But not since they're all naked. Nobody's ashamed. This is a chicken coop where the raccoon got into it, so I stopped using it. This is all the pond, and that's a wall to the outer world. Except for the coyotes come across there, and if there's no water, and the water goes all the way back. And that's another pond. I hope you enjoy my little tour. This is a man made creation, because before, it was one of those man made creations. And now. There's minnows and fish and beaver and otters and deer. Look at there. Oh, look. More. Another bouquet. So all of this is going to be berries, that's for blackberries, and there's otter and raccoons living all in here as well. And believe it or not, as high as that water is, look at that, what's that? Five feet down. So that's a peninsula. You see the water's been higher and lower. Over there. 
What's that? Hmm. Maybe it's an old mine or something. Hmm. That's where I live. All this is a wilderness that was once just an overgrown pasture with a bunch of mesquite trees and stuff like that. You know, very few people are getting to see this. Hi, there's one. Look at that. One's getting to see it. It's one of the things about being shadow banned and censored. <clears throat> people don't know, but it's been going on for years. So you may be one of the, the few 72,000 followers. The number hasn't changed in uh, 10 years now. Or one of the 6,500, 65,000 likes, which doesn't change. No matter how many likes you put. If you even get to see it. Indigo Eyes. What a great name. Thank you. Thank you, Indigo. This is another pond. It's about 18 foot deep. And, and it goes through and feeds into the other ponds. And so, this little tour today normally costs you about $20 a person. <laughs> when we give them. But this gives you a chance when you stay here to understand at Salvage, Texas, what you might do. Now, that hole I showed you a second ago... I'm going to just show you a little further, because if I show you any past that, there's no signal down there. But, yeehaw, yeah, I dug that a long time ago. So that's one of the holes, the features, because what we did here was experiment. How do you get down to the old topsoil from many years ago, hard as rock with clay from bentonite for volcanic ash from other episodes of earth tension and then bring it up to the top and bring it back to life again and the rocks and we went past the um the clovis period from clovis tools all that you can now look at that. i'm just back above water level again so i just wanted to go ahead and give you all that little bouquet oh we're gonna have more lots more shortly this is plums and they'll all be blooming oh and this is this is our grapes we have grapes everywhere as well plums but these are natural plums they're not like big fat plums i suspect we could nurture them and do better but i don't haven't done that yet the first trick was to get them water and then make everything possible because there was no water out here and there was three foot of red clay most people don't understand what red clay does. But it, it, it's bad for water. Look at Okay. I'm walking around. I can see raccoon tracks. And, and all sorts of different critters that live here now. So, I'm going to leave you all with one more bouquet of flowers. Another view. This was all higher. Much higher. About two foot higher. We've had issues with the neighbor look at that all this and then oh yeah and this is not a good one these little suckers the nastiest little things you don't want them they turn into what's called beggar's lice those little sticky things get into your socks now my final view for you if you've managed to come this far is Ship of Salvage Dreams from the backside. Again, one man's imagination manifested into islands, paradise for the birds, and all this is in the center of Texas, out of no pasture. The old rancher says, I just ruined it all. Ruined it. So that's all water runs all the way around that. And it did come around here, goes all the way to here, comes around here and goes back. It goes back, comes through the forest, comes through, comes around here. Then goes through, drops down, comes to here. Then you can see a waterfall goes under there. All the way around Miracle Mountain. Okay, now, in Miracle Mountain, incidentally, is a bunch of industrial landfill that was left here by a foundry long ago. And this is my way, hello, um, of, of remediating it all, keeping this heavy metals and cobalt and all the things they did just basically dumped on the land yeah 
So the front part where the building is and all behind it was virtually destroyed, poisoned, toxified. And so I sent a few million dollars in a few years of my life now, creating all these paradises, trap all this and keep it from getting into the river next door and going down the way. The goal is to create a little island here, a trust. And the trust that way, oh, there's a little snake. He just ran into the grass. Um, and make a trust, a nature trust, a preserve, so that all this can be caught, remediated, and transformed through plants and stuff back into beautiful, rich, natural resources and not be dumped into the river. So that's part of what I'm doing here at Salvage Texas. And if you want to come down and do <coughs> ecotourism and respect the property, not just come down and get drunk and visit, then I want to invite you if you want to consider your health and what you can do as an old person to make a difference. Whether it's to build something like that, which incidentally took me 11 days solo, 11 evenings. It's three stories tall. And it's all screwed. No nails. <laughs> that way I can say I, I was screwed the whole time I was up there. Yeah. Anyway, you can come and actually go up there and stand on the first floor. Or the second floor. I don't allow anybody on the third floor anymore. But one of the many things you can do with your imagination as an elder to prove what's possible. So with this waterfall, if I want to let the water go over and fill that up, I can actually capture energy out of it. And then there's also a pipe that goes under the entire mountain and then dumps out into Walden Pond, which is on the other side. So my objective for the next 10 years is going to be to go ahead and use this as an embassy, as a home base, to prove what's possible. What can you create with salvage? A new life, houses without imports, houses without toxins, houses that I've proven you can make 95% pure salvage. I've proven you can make absolute industrial wasteland into a, a paradise. And I, I, I had more, I really did. I had all sorts of evidence, and you can look at it. You'll be able to see it online nowadays. Unfortunately, you really won't be able to see a lot of it in person anymore. See, there's been some other people. Here's my raccoon. Here's the deer. And they're all trying to find food now because the bank took this land, seized it, didn't do it right, but they took it. And in the process of doing that, they destroyed another couple miles. Literally another couple of square miles of what could have been an environment. What was? You see, we had actually a uh, five foot heron, gray heron staying here. It was a, a water wonderland. Um, five to seven acres of water at any time based on keeping the water, retaining it from all the, unfortunately, chemical runoff from several institutions, businesses. It'll sit right up the way. Now, the way this works, all this is runoff, 135 acres, and 235 acres on the far side. And all that runs off into the San Marcos River. And to do so, would you believe it's got to run over all this dead trees and grass. And it enabled it to be cleaned and, and purified and not just cause silting and damage. And there was three foot of red clay, so nothing would grow on it. And so I cleaned it all up, manicured it, and created Darby's Canyon. Amongst other things, a reservoir to hold and retain all the water, and let it disperse into cattails and all these trees. This was all forested. And this is what a couple dozer, one dozer guy can do. And two men who are burying, as you'll go online and find, Darby's Canyon. Now, in some stories, like a fantasy I wrote, or I'm writing day by day, you will learn that some men have no respect for beauty. See, I had a vision quest. And I found that rock, and that rock, and that rock. When I asked 
Dear God, show me, please. Where can I cave? Where can I put a few places where life could grow? And so this water is coming up out of the ground. This is a natural spring growing, and they're trying to cover it up. This is what the devil does, <laughs> the demons of the world. They turn it into a parking lot. So they can what? Put up one more story. So all of this was broken up to keep the water from running quickly, from creating silt. All had grass. And you can still see this all these holes, these, that's the deer that used to be out here trying to find food. Used to have all sorts of food. It's sad. Because I had successfully changed 43 acres into a, a giant nature reserve. And a lot of it's floodplain anyway. Now, from that one, you see that over here. You can see what they pushed in. That was cliffs. Those cliffs are 70 foot from the top to where the water is at. That's still another 20 foot under the water. Over here, look at this. This is actually 235 acres of rainwater used to fill this. And where I'm at right now would be the water level at my feet for acres around, which they pushed in all the dirt and they're trying to bury it all. Now the really sick part about it is there's actually fish in there. This was a big, big pond. And now all this mud and everything, see over there where that truck stop is? They had to fill that in. 5,000 semi loads of dirt. Guess where they found some of the dirt at? So in the process of creating a means to go ahead and pay for creating the nature preserve, we sold them a bunch of dirt. And by doing that, we were able to go ahead and create these spots where nature could come and hope to get some water and some food. More bouquets, everybody. These are blue bonnets. Our state is known for blue bonnets. Look at these canyons. So, we have people, and you can see the pictures of people kayaking and swimming. Because when this is full, that cave is underwater. And we've been in a drought. In spite of the drought, that's natural. Now, and all this was canyons with grass and wildlife and all different kinds of critters. But you can see what they got in mind. A parking lot. Why would you bury that? Up on top of that is a monument, natural. You've seen pictures of it, go online, Castle Rock, the mother of all rocks. Came to me in a vision. Yeah. Oh, ho. yeah, our blue heron. Trinity's got shots. Oh, such gorgeous. We had white heron still. They're still visiting. Oh, another bouquet. So, that's my tree. I got to come get it someday. It used to float out here. That's how it got there. It floated there. That's how high the water was. That's a 1,500-year-old piece of cypress. This right here, you'd be in water. Normally, this is rainwater catchment because they do uh, pressure washer cleaning of all the old foundry, I mean, excuse me, all the um, oil field equipment right up on the highway there. And they also have some parking lots. So all those parking lots dump directly into the river. But normally, you would be, huh, I'd be underwater. I'd be walking with maybe my hat popping up. Not likely. All this, they're just pushing dirt in. And they're going to fill in all this natural habitat. 
so they can maybe make some money selling it to a parking lot. Hey, Pod, nice to see you. Mary, hey. Look at that. People actually got on here. They never finally let somebody know I'm on. They rarely do that. So anyway, I'm in what would have been 10 foot deep water. And I have these rocks to go across to. I built this originally. That rock over there is the last of them to go down underwater. And the rainwater's filled this up probably several feet. Just rainwater from this area that they haven't filled in yet. But ultimately, they're going to kill it. That has fish in it still. But the people that are doing this, they don't have a heart. They don't care about anything other than they might make a buck. So all this is running into the San Marcos River unabated because... They didn't get a permit. Yeah. And so the Texas Environmental Commission has come out here, a very nice young man. And maybe they're going to go ahead and help. And maybe Gonzales County would help. And maybe the city would help. Because ultimately, these men are basically going out there and brutalizing the property. There's more deer tracks. Came out of here with no food, wondering what to do. And guess where he's going? To the highway, guys. To I-10 now. To cross I-10. Not a good survival rate. That's how close it is. This used to seem like another world. You couldn't even see it. There were big old walls. All the way over here. Canyons. The deer could come down here and get water. And get food. As well as the coyotes. And the fox. The beaver. But now... They're going to have to go to the other side of the highway. Right there on the other side is the San Marcos River where all this shit's going to roll. All this right here. It all had gullies and canyons to stop the water from running off. All this now. All at that highway. All the trees are dead. Gee. What happened to all the trees one might say. And there was actually crossover spots right here to catch the water so that it wouldn't all run off. Here's some of red clay. Red clay. Three foot of red clay. Guys, if you want to learn what red clay is about, it's called iron oxide. It comes from our sun. It's extra evidence in our sun micronovas. But look at this. These are all trees. I had stuff living out here. Animals. And down there, that's floodplain, but they don't have a reason to do that yet. They have no plan. They're just doing it. Bulldozing it all. Now, this is all actually floodplain where the river on the other side, right there, where the sign is, the water comes under there and comes out right over here where that telephone pole is. And to this side, it's flooded from the San Marcos River to here. Now, from this side, we have 300 and... 20 acres now they come across this spot and in the far woods you'll see they ran all the way up the fence line did the same thing look at that run that's probably um 70 foot of elevation 60 foot of elevation and it's all going to be run off and the rains are about to happen down here in spring now when i first built the the dam across where walden pond is Look at those poor guys, all the way over here by the highway. I hope they make it. So when I was first starting, couldn't hold any water, but when it came, it came five inches at a time. Six inches at a time. Eleven inches in one week. Blew out the dams. But when that happens and you have something like this, I trapped it all in the property. None of it left. We didn't have any mud go anywhere. We had grass growing. We had all that happening. Now they just tore it down with no plan, no silt barriers, nothing to go ahead and stop it, prevent it from just running into the river, which caused sedimentation of the river. And that makes it difficult for the river fish to live, as well as the fact that they're going to carry off heavy metals and all sorts of garbage that was on the property if they're not careful because they are ignoring all the testing and everything approved in advance. But part of the property is toxic. Now, some people don't care. Look at this. I'm walking into this. You can see how high this is. 
but all this has been bulldozed to try to hide what was created for nature sake nature's sake is that's different so uh, it would be nice to have the fun the funding I don't play the lotto enough to win it and I'm going to sell some stuff off but I lost my urge to just make money a few years back and so I did things like this so you can imagine at this point how much more noise you see how high this was and none of that was visible As the saying goes, without license, without permit. There's a billion canyons that provided us with life. All sorts of places for birds. In fact, on the far corner over there, I had mud swallows coming back every year. You can see them over there on the wall. Right now, out there, that's still probably 12, 15 foot deep. And those are mud swallows and different animals living in the walls. And that rock, the mother of all rocks, has a cave under it. All this, I don't know how they figured they're just going to mash it down. But that's what they got in mind. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. I just thought I'd take you on my morning walk. Get that mile in if you can. Yeah, she's right. Trinity was right. Red foxes, gray foxes. We had a beaver living in there at one point, and uh, even catfish. Trinity caught some really big ass catfish right off that spot right there. I didn't catch anything, but she got my big catfish. Anyway, there's still catfish in here. And it's made, the water's coming from the ground up. This isn't rainwater, guys. This is natural water from springs. But, anyway, save your day, save your chance to make some difference, guys. Love y'all. Love y'all. Thanks for visiting. I'm going to download this, hopefully, and load it up to other places because nobody gets to see it here for some reason.